So our agenda for today is going to be the customization of the user portals. So we, we will be talking about these things. Like what is the user portal? We'll talk about some things called harnesses, you know, uh, portals, then your layouts. How do you customize these user portals? Why, why are we even doing it? So we'll, we'll talk about these things today. Okay. So generally, when, when it comes to uh, a PEG application, right, we, we would be by default getting two portals, right? One is the case worker, another is the case manager. Agree? Yes. Okay. Now, so again, by default, a few, few things were already put as part of your OOTB features. We, we have the menu options and we, we have you know, a, a, a designed way of how the case worker and case manager portals look like. But probably not all times I, I might want to use them or I might want to reuse those features. Okay? So basically, I would like to customize the views, the customize the portals according to my business requirements. Okay? So I might even need to create more portals also sometimes. Right? Probably I, I might have a different set of end users and I, I would like to create more and more user portals okay. how would i do it or how can i decide like you know what, what kind of features or what kind of uh, functionalities you are providing on a particular user portal okay. so how would you do it like how can you decide this like for a designated set of people i'm going to use this kind of uh, uh, user portal or they would be able to do these kind of uh, operations on my portal. Okay. So all this, again, yes, is part of a business requirements. So the product owners are the ones who are going to decide what goes where and who does it. But the creation or the customization of the portals is, again, part of us. We developers will be doing it. Now, in order to directly, you know, look, look into the uh, aspect of customization, so first we would be talking about something called as a portal. So as we know, everything in Pega is considered a rule, right? So the first thing you will be talking about is the portal rule here, right? So let's look into a bit of the hierarchy. As in, if you want to create a portal, what else you have to create as well? So we'll, we'll directly look into that hierarchy once. So let me just, uh, go back. This is login. Generally, when it comes to case types and all, we, we have a case level hierarchy, right? As in, suppose you take case types divided into stages then stages have processes and processes are nothing but flows right flows consists of different shapes then you have flow actions in it you have sections layouts controls so that's how your uh, case level hierarchy would go okay? so on the similar way you also have a hierarchy for the ui aspects so let me go to the dev studio So there is a step-by-step -step process in which I have to customize my portals, right? I cannot just randomly do it. So there is an organized way in which we are going to customize the portals. But before that, let us look at the hierarchy. Then we'll go back to the uh, process. Okay. Okay. So from where do I check the portals? I mean. Uh, how can I know that this particular operator is going to have access to these portals? Where can I see that? So it, it depends upon the access group. So when you look at the access group of any operator, you will see the application and the version definitely 
So the first thing is going to be uh, your application, as in to which application you are granting access, which version you are granting access, would be the first part. The second part is going to be your portals. So what all portals does this user have access to? So access group is what decides which portals can this particular user have the access to. Here I see on the access group, we see application uh, and the version. So what else I also see is the available portals. So this is what decides what all portals does this access group would grant access to. So currently I, I see five different portals. Of course, three are your App Studio, Admin Studio and developer studio other two are your case worker and case manager okay, so that's why i'm able to launch these two okay, and here is where i can decide what is going to my default portal every time this user logs in he's launching the admin studio okay, but if required i can change it i can make it to the developer so that i don't need to switch uh, the studios again right so this time he logs in he will be logging into the developer studio so from this is where we will be starting to look at the portals okay so the first initiation or launch point would be from your access groups now can i have more portals yes you can so these are all the various ones provided by the platform that is required I can create my own portal as per the business requirement. Let's see the hierarchy first. I'm going to just open a portal. So case manager portal is what I'm opening. So inside your portals, you have something called as harnesses. Okay. Yes. So let me convert this. So this is your portal. Let me convert this to the composite mode so that we would get more options to explore here. Right. So you have this configurations related to the role of the user and the time. Right. Probably this is going to be your first step in the customization of the user portals so i'll be switching in back and forth uh, into the ppt and the studio okay. so the first step so we, we are going to look at five steps as part of the customization process 